Good morning and welcome. I'm happy to be singing with you today. I hope you'll sing out and join me. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything is gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be all right. Pray on just a little while longer. Pray on just a little while longer. Pray on just a little while longer. Everything is gonna be all right. Sing on just a little while longer. Sing on just a little while longer. Sing on just a little while longer. I know justice is coming soon. Fight on just a little while longer. Fight on just a little while longer. Fight on just a little while longer. I know justice is coming soon. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything is gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be all right. Love is little, love is low. Love will make our spirit grow. Grow in peace, grow in light. Love will do the thing that's right. Love is little, love is low. Love will make our spirit grow. Grow in peace, grow in light. Love will do the thing that's right. Good morning and welcome everyone to White Bear Unitarian Universalist Church. We're grateful to share this space with you. Service participants today include Carol Coet and Victoria Safford, supported by Amy Peterson Derrick, Aaron Scott, and Sarah Goodman. Today, after the service at 11.15, we hope that you'll join us for the annual meeting instead of our normal cyber social hour. Aaron will put the Zoom link and easy instructions into the chat box. Uh, watch the chat box also for information about our weekly offering and how to text to give. This will be up on a slide a little later, but we welcome your gifts at any time. Welcome to our church. Together we grow our souls and serve the world. Come in. Come into this space which we make holy by our presence. Come in with all your vulnerabilities and strengths, fears, anxieties, loves, and hopes. For here you need not hide nor pretend nor be anything other than who you are and who you are called to be. Come into this space where we can heal and be healed, forgive and be forgiven. Come into this space where the ordinary is sanctified, the human is celebrated, the compassionate is expected. Come into this space Together we make it a holy space and welcome. Lenin will light our chalice. Hello, good morning, I'm Lenin. Today I light the chalice for all the upstanders all working hard to make the world a better place. Being an upstander means that you stand up for what's right even when it's hard. My church community calls me to be an upstander for everyone, and together we will make the world a better place. I like the chalice for all those upstanders.
Please join me in the opening words this morning. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Please join me in the opening, opening hymn, Covenant. In these times, your gifts are needed more than ever. Today's offering will go to support the programs and vision of our church community. Please be generous. First reading today is from Maria Popova. All of it, the rings of Saturn and my father's wedding band, the underbelly of the clouds pinked by the rising sun, Einstein's brain bathing in a jar of formaldehyde, every grain of sand that made the glass that made the jar and each idea Einstein ever had 
a shepherdess singing in the mountains of my native Bulgaria and each one of her sheep, every hair on my dog's velveteen dog ears and the whiskers of Montagna's cat, every translucent fingernail on my friend Amanda's newborn son, every stone with which Virginia Woolf filled her pockets before wading into the river to drown, every copper atom composing the disk that carried arias aboard the first human-made object to enter interstellar space, and every oak splinter of the floorboards onto which Beethoven collapsed in the fit of fury that cost him his hearing. The wetness of every tear that's ever been wept over a grave and the sheen of the beak of every raven that's ever watched the weepers in the graveyard. Every cell in Galileo's fleshy finger and every molecule of gas and dusk that made the moons of Jupiter to which the finger pointed. The dipper of freckles constellating the olive firmament of a certain form forearm I love and every flutter of the tenderness with which I love her. All the facts and figments by which we are perpetually figuring and reconfiguring reality, it all banged into being 13.8 billion years ago from a single source, no louder than the opening note of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, no larger than the dot levitating over the lowercase i, the i lowered on the pedestal of ego. How can we know this? and still succumb to the illusion of separateness, of otherness. This veneer must have been what the confluence of accidents and atoms known as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. saw through when he spoke of our inescapable network of mutuality. This veneer is what Walt Whitman punctured when he wrote, every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. The second reading is from poet Aurora Levens Morales. Say these words when you lie down and when you rise up, when you go out and when you return, in times of mourning and in times of joy. Inscribe them on your doorposts, embroider them on your garments, tattoo them on your shoulders. Teach them to your children, your neighbors, your enemies. Recite them in your sleep, here in the cruel shadow of empire. Another world is possible. Imagine winning. This is your sacred task. This is your power. Imagine every detail of winning, the exact smell of the summer streets in which no one has been shot, the muscles you have never unclenched from worry gone soft as newborn skin. The sparkling taste of food when we know that no one on earth is hungry, that the beggars are fed, that the old man under the bridge and the woman wrapping herself in the sheets in the back seat of a car, and the children who suck on stones, nest under a flock of roofs that keep multiplying their shelter. Lean with all your being towards that day when the poor of the world shake down a rain of good fortune out of heavy clouds and justice rolls down like waters. Defend the world in which we win as if it were your child. It is your child. Defend it as if it were your lover. It is your lover. When you inhale and when you exhale, breathe the possibility of another world into the 37.2 trillion cells of your body until it shines with hope, then imagine more. Imagine rape is unimaginable. Imagine war is a scarcely credible rumor that the crimes of our age, the grotesque inhumanities of greed, the sheer and astounding shamelessness of it, the vast fortunes made by stealing lives, the horrible normalcy it came to have is unimaginable to our heirs the generations of the free. Don't waver. Don't let despair sink its sharp teeth into the throat with which you sing. Escalate your dreams. Make them burn so fiercely that you can follow them down any dark alleyway of history and not lose your way. 
Make them burn clear as a starry drinking gourd over the grim fog of exhaustion and keep walking. Hold hands, share water, keep imagining so that we and the children of our children's children may live. wonder, do we really want it? Change is going to come, said Sam Cooke, but I wonder, can we really see it? Each of us, whoever we are on this journey of life, can we really envision a changed world and see our own place inside it? Can we imagine the exact smell of the summer streets, in the words of Aurora Levin Morales, the smell of summer streets in which no one has been shot, 
a sparkling taste of food, when we know that no one on earth is hungry, that the beggars are fed, imagine with all your being toward that day when the poor of the world shake down a rain of good fortune out of the heavy clouds and justice rolls down like water. Can you see that? Can you imagine? What would that cost us? And I ask that knowing there's a whole wide range of diversity among us, wealthy people and not wealthy people and everybody in between. What would it cost you, that redistribution, that reparation, restoration of a right and ethically elegant balance that has never yet existed on this earth? Defend that world, says the poet, as if it were your child. It is your child. Defend it as if it were your lover. It is your lover. Imagine, she says, that the crimes of our age, the grotesque inhumanities of greed, the sheer and astounding shamelessness of it, the vast fortunes made by stealing lives, imagine that the horrible normalcy it came to have is unimaginable. I wonder sometimes if we can, I wonder what it takes to want to. Change is not, it never is an easy thing. I think all the time so often of the words of Frederick Douglass, an excerpt from a longer speech, words gathered into our hymnal because he was not speaking only politically, and where exactly is the line? The words are in our hymn book, placed there as a prayer to help people grow souls, to consider what it means to have a soul worth saving, to be and to breathe for a while embodied spirit. Hear Frederick Douglass on the back of our hymn book, praying. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet deprecate ag agitation are those who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its mighty waters. This struggle may be a moral one or it may be a physical one or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, it never will. So you have to really want it. Transformation of things as they are, starting with your own heart, your own perspective, your power, circumstance, security. And I wonder sometimes if we really do want it, if we really understand, especially for white, especially for straight, cisgender, of a certain age. I wonder if we really understand what's on the table here. I know I don't understand. I know I can't quite imagine. I need companions. There's a poem I love by Jane Kenyon. Many of you know it. A poem about paying attention. I got out of bed on two strong legs. It might have been otherwise. I ate cereal, sweet milk, ripe flawless peach. It might have been otherwise. I took the dog uphill to the birch wood, and all morning I did the work I love. At noon I lay down with my mate. It might have been otherwise. We ate dinner together at a, can a table with silver candlesticks. It might have been otherwise. I slept in a bed in a room with paintings on the walls and planned another day just like this day. But one day, I know, it will be otherwise. I've kept this poem close as a prayer of gratitude for the loveliness of simple things, all the quiet joys that so often go unnoticed and unspoken. It is a gentle admonition to love the life you have. And actually, it's not so gentle, ending as it does with that barb at the end, that reminder of mortality. It's poignant, urgent, tinged with more than a drop of sadness. Don't wait to pay attention. Don't wait to speak your thanks. Don't wait to savor joy. Lately though, gratefully, I've held this poem another way, almost as a prophecy, as a reminder of how unevenly the cards are dealt us in this life, how for some it's peaches in the morning, sweetness at night, candlelight dinners, walks with the dog, how for some it's safe and relatively lovely almost all the time. And for others, 
it's otherwise almost all the time. Suddenly the line, one day I know it will be otherwise, blares like a trumpet, shattering complacency. It is a street chant. It's the thunder and lightning of power conceding. The great and mighty prayer of change is gonna come when the poor of the world shake down a rain of good fortune out of the heavy clouds and justice rolls down like waters. I'm not saying we don't each, all, everyone, deserve the sweet beaches and the long afternoons of love and good work and deep rest at the end of the day. I'm saying that we each, all, everyone, absolutely do, every one. And one day, God willing, things are going to be otherwise. God willing and us willing. Change is going to come. And that change may require some of us to relinquish some of our peaches, our privilege, our place. Otherwise, it can't ever be otherwise. And that change won't come easy. So therefore, it is so important to be careful what you wish for, what you march for, what you say you're fighting for, what you post and repost on Facebook, because I wonder, do we really mean it? For four weeks now, you've all been asking, we have all been asking what to do, confessing to each other, I don't know what to do. When I hold that question before my own face in the mirror, I ask myself, not gently, well, what were you doing before May 25th, before the murder of George Floyd? Before the people came pouring into the streets like rushing righteous water, washing over everything, cleansing all the deadly silent spaces in so many cities all over the world, what made that day different for you? What were you doing before to make things otherwise? I ask myself as gently as possible, as if gently were even possible right now or appropriate, what were you doing on May 24th, May 23rd, with all your righteous outrage, all your grief and power? In what ways were you being, in the words of Lenin, an upstander then, really practicing your Unitarian Universalist faith? What were you doing before to crack open your heart and plow up the ground? Whatever it was, do more of that. Or, depending on what it was, do less. Listen now for the wisdom, for the call of other voices, other stories now. Imagine your own place, changed place, in a transformed world. These mirror conversations with myself, with my heart, they're not gentle. They're also not always honest, I'm sure, or accountable, or fully informed, or humble enough, or brave enough, fierce enough, kind enough. I need companions. Long ago, 30 years ago, I knew that for me it's important, it's imperative to grow my own soul and discern the call to service in community, not alone in my bathroom confessional with the relentless and frankly clueless mirror. We can't do this work alone strengthen the spirit for the long, long haul, sing songs of resistance and hope and despair, lament, repent, strategize a living revolution and inspire each other to be brave upstanders, not callow, shallow bystanders. You can't do it by yourself. I knew a long time ago, and I know more than ever now, that only an accountable community, a community of faith and hope that speaks the truth in love, only for me, in a congregation, can I ask even the most intimate questions? Who am I? Who am I called to be? That's not only mine or yours to answer. We need companions. For 15 weeks, we've been apart from one another. If someone had told us in March that this were possible, we would not have believed it. No more than we would have ever believed that 118,365 people in our country would be dead. That 1,376 people in Minnesota would, be died, would have died 
just plucked from our midst, gone from our sight. Let's hold that for a moment. What's happened to us? The reality that we must hold this and so much more now separately may be the hardest thing. I don't quite know how to do it. I don't know how to be a human, a person, let alone a minister, without you and without others whom I love and respect and rely on, not just for hugs of comfort, but for the occasional slapdown of accountability, the way a person who knows you and thinks you're worth it looks you in the eye, takes your two hands in their two hands or their sho your shoulders in their hands and says, come on, we're going to do this together. It feels like in March, we fled a burning building with only enough time to stuff a few things in our pockets, grab a few treasures and just run. It feels like in March, we were banished without warning to a thousand desert islands. And now we're playing that party game. If you were all alone on a desert island and you could have one book, one movie, one dinner companion, what's one cherished thing you would bring? Take a breath, kneel down, empty out your pockets, lay your stuff out on the sand, and look, there are all the songs that Carol's been teaching us for the past decade. They're all safe and sound in your musical muscle memory. And if they fall out or you forget, don't worry, they're up on a slide every Sunday. We're singing together apart. And here is the canon of stories that Amy's been sharing all along with our children and all of us. We hear them every week now as if they were new because now we need them differently than before and they resonate inside us and among us. We're sharing them together apart. And here are your comrades, your companions, strangers and friends on Wednesdays, on Sundays, and at other times, if you just take the time to log on, just make the time to do Zoom. They are so thirsty for your face, for your voice, to catch a glimpse of your story as it unfolds in this strange time, this strange and holy time. They're so needing your story to interweave itself around their stories. We're holding each other together apart. Empty your pockets. The few things you grabbed before we scattered, the stuff you've carried with you all along. And look, there are your convictions, your questions, your hopes, the prayers that sustain you in the night, and they always have, the wonderings you wake to in the morning, the God, the love that holds you in strong and hands and will not let you go, the higher power, force of light and love that's always held you, even now all still there. Maria Popova writes of how easily, how carelessly sometimes we wall ourselves off from each other and from our own true selves intoxicated by individualism and ego and fear. How can we still succumb, she asks, to the illusions of separateness, of otherness? This wall, this veneer, it must have been what the confluence of accidents and atoms known as Dr. Martin Luther King saw through when he spoke of our inescapable network of mutuality. It must be what Walt Whitman punctured when he wrote, every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. We're still together apart. The building is closed, but the church is open, as open as it's ever been, open, as we say in baby dedications, to every possibility. Together, even now, we're starting to imagine, to risk imagining, to risk really wanting transformation in this world, radical change. And the only way to take a risk like that, to dream dreams like that, is together, not alone. Across the ether here, we're strong, we're unified, not always in agreement, not at all, especially right now. We need the liveliness of argument, the creative tension that shoots sparks when one person's story or experience collides with someone else's story and the plot thickens then, the truth deepens as we learn how to hear and hold each other. We know how to do that. 
pluralism, respect, courage, reverence, compassion. We know how to dream in harmony. Someone said this week, this month will go down in history. We know the end goal of all these mass protests is to create a safer, healthier, more joyful, just, and peaceful world. Our liberation is tied together, they said, and the time for change has come. I'm holding that bright ribbon because I know you're holding, you're holding the other end of it. From Aurora Levins Morales, her variation on the Vahavta in the Hebrew prayer, Shema Yisrael. When you inhale and when you exhale, breathe the possibility of another world into the 37.2 trillion cells of your body till it shines with hope. And then imagine more. Don't waver. Don't despair. Don't let it sink its sharp teeth into the throat with which you sing. Escalate your dreaming. Make your dreams burn so fiercely that you can follow them down any dark alleyway of history and not lose your way. Make them burn clear as a starry drinking gourd over the grim fog of exhaustion and keep going. Hold hands, share water, keep imagining so that we and the children of our children's children may live. For a few moments, let's hold silence together, knowing we're together. Spirit of life, hold us now, all of us together, apart but never separate. Remind us of shared breath, that we are all one body together with all people and the animals, the living world, everything alive upon this fragile earth. From one source, a pinpoint, have we come, all of us, to be here breathing all together just a little while? Separation is illusion. In our every action, every prayer, with courage, with humility, may we willingly and joyfully aid and abet the mighty changes that we know are gonna come, all the holy transformations that will make this world and our own souls, our own lives, more holy and more whole. Amen and amen. We're gonna sing together one more time, How Can I Keep From Singing? My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the real though far off hymn That hails a new creation Through all the tumult and the strife I hear that music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though the tempest loudly roars, I know the truth it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? 
When tyrants tremble, sick with fear, and hear their death knell ringing. When friends rejoice, both far and near, how can I keep from singing to prison cell and dungeon vile? Our thoughts to them are winging when friends by shame are undefiled. How can I keep from singing? Please join me in the closing words. May peace dwell within our hearts and understanding in our minds. May courage steal our will and love of truth forever guide us. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Please sign up to receive our email news. It's the best way and often the only way to get updates twice a week about online services and groups and gatherings, circles of care. Call us with questions or write to us or call or write to ask for help or offer help. We're sending love to you today from all of our locations and from 328 Maple Street. Stay resilient. Please stay connected. So be it. See to it. Amen. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. The preachers prayed for me, had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My family prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Strangers prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed, I'm so glad they prayed, I'm so glad they prayed for me.